Amnesia A Machine for Pigs, also known as Amnesia for Dummies, is the sequel to Amnesia The Dark Descent, the game that caused gamers around the world to shit themselves after it was released back in 2010. Frictional Games only published this sequel, however, whereas a team called The Chinese Room developed it, which is probably why Machine for Pigs has very little to do with the original game in terms of mechanics, story, and the overall feel. The basic setup is at least the same. Your character named Mandus wakes up dazed and confused, with his memory wiped having no recollection of recent events. As you move through the game world and complete the campaign, more and more clues are revealed, and just like the first game, Mandus finds out he's involved in some evil and twisted stuff and has to come face to face with his sordid past. The game is set in London on New Year's Eve in 1899, which you gotta give them props for, as it's a pretty unique setting for a video game, and it does make a pretty cool backdrop. Mandus is supposed to be some kind of wealthy butcher or industrialist, and he gets a mysterious call from the engineer of the factory, saying his two sons are being held captive deep inside the machine. It all seems a bit fishy, and of course it is, with things not really being what they seem. The children weep in the darkness, and the floodwaters continue to rise. From that point, you're off on your mission to rescue your sons from the bowels of the machine, or something along those lines, but as the truth is slowly revealed, things take a bit of a sharp turn, and the goal of the game changes entirely. I'd be lying if I said the story in this game makes a lick of sense, it's really, really confusing at times. I won't spoil the ending or anything, but I just think it's got the same problem that the Penumbra games had, where they make the story too big for its own good. There's a shifting point about two thirds into the game, and it totally caught me off guard because of how out of left field it was. This all happens in the span of about two or so hours. You see, A Machine for Pigs is a very short game, and it could be even finished in a single sitting if you had enough spare time. I spent a fair bit of time exploring the environment and I even left the game idle at one point to go off and make a cup of tea, and I still clocked in around the two hour mark. In case you're wondering, I was making jasmine tea. This is the kind of game made for people who don't really want to be challenged all that much and it is in a lot of ways not that far removed from a walking simulator. I mean, there's long sections in this game that are literally unfailable, where you're just walking down a generic looking hallway listening to a narration as more of the game's confusing plot is filled in. Even those moments when you do have to solve puzzles are really just broken down into flipping switches or spinning valves, often not knowing what it is you're actually doing, but just having the common sense to know that these switches and valves need to be interacted with. At this point, the area you often came from will now be conveniently locked off, forcing you down this new path. It's like the game is constantly pushing you in the right direction. It really is, as I said, amnesia for dummies, and there's a few resounding reasons as to why this is. Most importantly is that they've just simply dumbed down and removed more of the traditional survivor horror mechanics from the last game. For starters, there is no inventory system whatsoever. There's no health items, no tinders, or basic items you have to use to solve different puzzles. Whenever something is needed to complete a puzzle, it's always just an actual item that your character can physically pick up, requiring you to just walk back to the area where it needs to be slotted in, and voila, the puzzle is solved. It's the same thing in Half-Life 2, where you'd grab a physics item and it magically floats in front of Gordon Freeman's face. Your oil lantern is replaced by an electric lantern that never runs out, again just removing the whole resource management component that makes survival horror so enjoyable. Well, how about how the whole sanity system from the prior game, something that made staying in the darkness for periods of time damaging to your health, has been completely removed as well. Mandus now even has regenerating health, which whilst being slow, kind of removes any real sense of threat entirely. The only enemies you encounter in the game are man pigs, or pigmen if you will. These things are utterly stupid, perhaps intentionally, and you genuinely have to purposefully make them detect you. Even if you are seen, it's incredibly easy to just run away, bunny hopping around to prevent them from hitting you, and eventually they'll just give up. You can stare at them for days on end as well, without having to worry about being detected, compared to the first game where Daniel would start having a goddamn nervous breakdown if he stared at one of the gatherers for more than a few seconds. I suppose crouching makes you more harder to be seen, but the game just never tells you or explains how the stealth actually works. So I just found myself running past them or crouching and kinda hoping for the best. If your only enemy type in the game is trivial in terms of the threat they pose, then that's a pretty big deal. More so if it's a horror game where your character is unarmed with no means of defense. They're only encountered in the game about four or five times, at least four or five times where you actually have to avoid them. And as I said, you often have to be going out of your way on purpose to have them detect you. There's one area later in the game where I died a couple of times only because it was an entirely new enemy type and the game didn't give me enough time to adjust to what the hell was happening. 
I'll give them credit though, the design for these things is pretty unsettling, but they really shit the bed with this because of how utterly unintimidating and non-threatening they are. Oh, it's a big man! A big man! Aside from the gameplay itself, you've got the presentation. Something I'd argue is often more important than the gameplay in a horror game, simply because a good atmosphere can carry crappy gameplay, as a game like Call of Cthulhu is a good example of. Did I pronounce that right? Are you happy? Well, the presentation is a bit of a mixed bag. The game runs on the same engine used in the first Amnesia game, which is Frictional Games HPL Engine, in this case HPL Engine 2. And it doesn't really look any better or worse than the first game, I'd say it's about on par if anything. The problem is the overall image is very dark and lacking a lot of detail with the lighting and textures. A lot of the areas that I think are trying to be atmospheric and gritty have no contrast between the darkness and the light sources, making everything feel very murky. It's not like the game was being made for consoles, and it's a bit of a shame that the visuals haven't really improved all that much. On top of that, it also runs like shit. I'd say it runs even worse than the first game, which is kind of unacceptable considering how neck and neck they are visually. The major issue with the performance is the stuttering, which happens without any real reason at random moments, and the frame rate just takes a nosedive down to like 20 frames. Then it'll shoot back up to 60 frames just as quickly. It shouldn't perform this poorly. Not at all, Sunny Jim. Thankfully though, the sound design is amazing. It's got great voice acting, even if the story is a little bit confusing. There's great music and just incredible atmospheric effects. There were a few times when the soundscape was lacking, but overall this area has a high amount of polish, which is what you absolutely need in a horror game. So sound department, pat yourself on the back. I will help you where I can, but you must be swift, my little friend. Even still though, there's very little worth praising in this game. It's just a lackluster horror game, and it doesn't really hold a candle or an electrical lantern, if you will, to the dark descent in the slightest. It's really aimed at people who don't want a challenging horror game, one that will maybe give them a couple scares, but it is pretty casual for the most part, and this kind of trend is what I really think continued with Frictional Games' latest game, Soma. Another game that I felt was just a dumbed down Dark Descent. The Chinese room are the same people who created Dear Esther, the game that is literally just about one man walking around an island listening to dialogue, so I'm not at all surprised. If you want a creepy game set in a pseudo steampunk setting, then maybe go play Bioshock or something like that. Amnesia a Machine for Pigs is only likely to elicit the odd shriek of surprise as opposed to the blood-curdling horror of its predecessors, The Dark Descent and Penumbra. It's a big man! 